When I was a young fossil collector, my dad gave me this hunk of rock covered in tiny fossilized shells. As any good boy scientist would, I immediately went to my fossil ID book to see what type of animal left these fossils behind. They looked like tiny clams, but looks can be deceiving, and I discovered that the fossils were left behind by members of an entirely different phylum, Brachiopoda, the so-called lamp shells. Underwhelmed but content, I put the fossil on a shelf with the others and never thought about brachiopods again until I started doing research for this video. At first glance, boring. But give these animals a chance. Dig a little further into the depths of prehistoric geology and you'll find they're still kind of boring. But what they represent in paleontology is very important. As always, what we learn about Earth's past has a direct impact on our understanding of Earth's present as well as our ability to predict Earth's future. But what is a brachiopod? How are they any different from clams and other bivalves? And what do they even do? We'll find the answer to all these questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. This is a clam. You may have heard of them before. Clams and other bivalves are an important food source for marine predators. They're also important for human society as a source of sustainable seafood, jewelry, protection from storm surges, and natural filtration. This is a brachiopod. They don't do any of those things. But they make really cool fossils. Just like a clam, a brachiopod has two shells covering a soft body. The difference lies in the symmetry of their shells. Clam shells are mirror images of each other kind of like a hot dog bun. Brachiopod shells are more like a hamburger bun, with small differences in shape and size between the top shell and the bottom shell. For you math dorks, clams have a horizontal plane of symmetry, while brachiopods have a vertical plane of symmetry. Both of these filter-feeding animals would be completely defenseless without their shells. But this is more of a concern for clams, who are packed with plenty of delicious meat and nutrients. Brachiopods have less to worry about, not only do they lack much nutritional value, they also taste bad, so predators will usually consider them not even worth the effort of eating. If you've watched my other videos, and I hope you have, you've heard me put a lot of emphasis on the food web, the invisible string that ties together every species through the exchange of energy and the balance of resources. So where does an animal with minimal prey and almost no natural predators fit into this vast interconnected web? To tell you the truth, they kinda don't. At least not today. Brachiopods first appear on the fossil record about 550 million years ago during the early Cambrian period. They quickly diversified into tens of thousands of different species. During the Paleozoic era, which lasted about 289 million years, brachiopods appear to be one of the most abundant animals on the ocean floor. Some populations were so dense that they even formed reefs. Today, only about 400 species exist, and they're not nearly as widespread as they once were. Does this mean that brachiopods are fading into extinction? Nah. This phylum has survived five mass extinctions. They're tough little bugs, and although they never bounced back to their historic diversity levels, they keep on trucking. When the dust settles after a mass extinction event, Surviving groups have a tendency to evolve and diversify to fill whatever ecological niches are left available to them. This trend is what allowed large mammals to dominate the planet after the fall of the dinosaurs. Nature hates a vacuum. And for whatever reason, the vacuums left behind by extinct brachiopods were filled in such a way that limited diversity in those that survived. Nevertheless, they persist. And although rare, their numbers don't appear to be decreasing. Brachiopods are energy-efficient filter feeders with almost no predators, existing in ocean habitats worldwide and at all depths. Members of the brachiopod genus Lingula have survived virtually unchanged for over 500 million years, so it's fair to say that they're doing something right, even if they don't really do anything. There could be a lesson in there somewhere, but I don't know. Next week, we're going to meet another group of ancient survivors. These ones a bit harder to ignore. 
a phylum whose members can be found in freshwater, saltwater, hot springs, frozen soil, rainforests, house plants, a jar of kombucha, this woman's brain, and a crashed space shuttle. The roundworms, phylum nematoda. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.